everyone. Okay, so for today, we're just gonna go over loosely how I drafted the pattern for the corset that I made. Normally, I do not make patterns because I am really lazy and I like to kind of take a like learn as I go kind of approach. But what's good about making patterns is that you can make multiples of whatever you made. So you guys have already seen the floral one that I did that I made out of that blazer that I thrifted. And for my upcycling competition, I wanted to make something <laughs> that matched my denim trench, uh, trench coat. So I made a denim corset using that pattern. So that was really nice. Um, you know, was able to whip this up basically in one night because it was a last minute decision as most of my decisions are. So that's what's great about a pattern is that you can make the same thing over and over again. So today I'm gonna show you really quickly how I did it. I think a lot of like what I'm about to show you can be applied in other ways, not just in this corset. So if you are kind of like new to pattern drafting or just like wanna get started on it, um, that I think this is a great video to kind of just inspire that. So supplies that you will need. Measuring tape, paper scissors, as well as uh, fabric scissors. In the video, I use the same pair of scissors for both, but normally you would use a separate pair um, so that you don't dull your fabric scissors. Scotch tape, ruler, some kind of notebook for, or just piece of scrap paper for drawing up your blueprint, a sketch, taking notes. I really like these ones that have grids on the paper. Um, because it helps me just like draw a little bit better and it makes it feel a little bit like more scientific. I always liked graph paper. Pens, um, it's also good to have Sharpie on hand. And then you will need pattern paper. Now there's actual pattern paper and it is also gridded and it's white, it's very nice, um, but it's really hard to get unless you're like close to a fabric store that sells it. So what I actually use, Trader Joe's paper bags or like any kind of grocery bag. Um, one, because it's sustainable, you're using something you already have. And two, this paper is actually really um, durable. So this is what this is made out of. And then I also used a little bit of graph paper to make edits. Butcher paper works really great. You know, use what you got. Maybe like even gift wrap, I think. Gift wrap would be great. But anyway, use what you have. Um, don't go up, up and buy more. So now that you've gathered your materials, let's get into it. Alrighty guys, so all designs start with a drawing. It doesn't have to be great, doesn't have to be beautiful, but I like to do this because it's a blueprint, right? So you're just mapping out what you're trying to do here. Maybe you don't follow it, but it gives you a really great starting point. So for the corset, you know, I wanted to keep it really simple. Nothing too crazy, I've never tried one before. So I'm just gonna draw a general kind of shape of what I want. I like how a lot of the ones that I saw were out in the market, kind of a square neck. So just emulating that here. I like to use graph paper because it kind of helps you draw a little bit more symmetrically, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Just get your ideas on paper. Okay, so now you have your front and your back. So I remember seeing a couple different corsets out there and they had boning, kind of one down the center, another one here, here, and then I have one that right here to kind of stabilize the side. Boning. And I think I had some in the back. And then most likely you'll have the uh, shoulder seams. Okay, great. So now you have a sketch. Now on the same sketch, you can take your notes in terms of measurement. I'm just gonna draw the second one. Okay guys, so I just wanna go over what measurements we are going to be taking um, before we get into it. So the first one we're going to be taking is the neck width. Second measurement is the chest width. Next is front length, front length from shoulder, side measurement, the back width, and lastly, the back strap length. For taking your measurements, you're gonna need a measuring tape. The first one we're gonna be taking, don't get super caught up in are these accurate because what we're gonna end up doing is making a prototype of, of our pattern and we're gonna fit it on ourselves to see you know, what changes do we wanna make um, and then that way you'll be able to perfect the fit a bit more. So. 
you know, don't, don't obsess over, you know, is this perfect? Because we'll make it perfect. And what actually helps is if you wear a tank top that kind of has the neck shape that you want. Um, so if I wanted a corset that had this like kind of more high neck, narrow to the shoulders shape, like this is actually really great to work off of because we can kind of see like, oh, you know, this is, I like how big this arm hole is. So I'm gonna, you know, try to like emulate that. So, so the first measurement we're gonna take is um, the neck opening. So this tank top is more narrow at the top. So I probably want it to be a little bit more open. So I'm going to take my measurement of about maybe eight inches. Um, another thing to think about when you're taking this measurement is how thick do you want the straps? Um, my straps were fairly thin. I think they were like an inch and a half. So, you know, if, you're, if your strap is an inch and a half, like if you make this area your, your neck width um, too wide, then your strap is gonna kind of like fight with your armpit. Don't be too generous, but eight sounds pretty good to me. And then if I had, you know, an inch and a half uh, strap, totally fine. So the next thing we're gonna take is the full length of your corset. So how I like to take it is measure it from the top of my shoulder. So the top of the shoulder, basically like where the top of your strap is sitting right there, not forward. You want it right at the top of your shoulder. You wanna bring it down. You wanna think about like, how long do I want my corset? You know, mine was longer in the front and then it kind of curved up a bit. So I wanted mine a little bit longer in the front. So um, I, my belly button's down here, but I think belly button is good. You know, another thing to think about is like, what are you wearing with this with? And I was like, well, I wear high-waisted everything in terms of bottoms. So I was like, okay, well, you know, we'll kind of think about that. These pants are high-waisted. Another thing about measuring yourself is um, don't look down because you're gonna end up doing this and you're gonna lose a lot of length there. So make sure to be looking up, you know, shoulders back. And it's always good to do this in the mirror. I'm just doing it in the camera, but normally I would do this in a mirror. Okay, I'm gonna take a measurement. So that's 17. Next measurement we're gonna take is um, from the top of the neck down to the bottom. So again, kind of think about how much scoop do you want in your corset? So kind of how I like to do this is, again, measuring from the top of your shoulder down you know, again, this is why it's like nice to have a tank top where you're like, oh, I like how low this is. Um, so you can basically measure, if you were wearing a tank top like that, you would just measure from the where that tank top is hitting you there, like let's say it was there, to, you know, however long you wanted your corset to be. So I was kind of, remember my measurement was 17. So if I wanted it to kind of scoop, I like mine a little, I wanted mine a little bit more busty. So I'm gonna hit right here. Two points I've hit on my measuring tape are nine and 17. So do the math there. You got eight. Next measurement we are going to take is across chest. So this is where your nipple line is. See where the side seam is on my tank top. You know, you're just gonna measure side seam to side seam. Another thing to remember is I kind of like to inflate my chest, inflate my gut when I take my measurements because it accounts for eating room. You know, don't be, don't be trying to be the skinniest person that you can be because you need that extra room, honey. Trust me. Okay, so just kind of relax your body. Another thing you can do is kind of give the, the measuring tape a little bit of slack. All right, we've got 17 and a half here. The last measurement we're going to take is the length of your corset on the side. So remember I said that, you know, mine was a little bit longer in the front and it's scooped up. So I'm just gonna kind of take this into account, you know, measure from the top of my tank top here. The last few measurements we're gonna take are gonna be for the back of your corset. Back measurement, it, I'm gonna do the same thing. And kind of where I want this to hit is where do you want the back of your corset to be, you know? Like generally speaking, looking at wearing this tank top, kind of where the, the bottom of this um, armhole is, is probably where you're gonna want it. Cause you want enough coverage that it'll stay on your body. And we'll just measure from side seam to side seam. So I got it there, I've got it there. All right, I've got a measurement. Last measurement's a little bit tricky. Um, it's gonna be the back strap uh, measurement. Um, and the reason why that's tricky is because it's hard to measure one on yourself but two, what I ultimately do most of the time is just give myself extra length. And then when I'm going to sew the final garment, you'll probably need like a friend or a buddy to help you kind of like pin where it feels most comfortable for you. Basically, I just give myself insurance with like extra length. So 
How I'm gonna start out with the measurement though is from the top of your shoulder, I'm gonna hold it. This is why it's kind of good to have a friend because you'll feel like you're kind of like contorting yourself in ways that like don't make sense. Looking at your back, like where is the, you know, the back of your corset going to fall? And I'm gonna guesstimate right about here. So I'm just gonna pinch it. Don't write down this exact measurement. What you wanna do is give yourself like another like three inches. So mine was 10, so I'm just gonna write down 13. Let's move on. Okay, so you can see here, here's my original sketch. And this is where I have all my measurements. So I actually, you know, have my pattern here with me. Um, this is the pattern that I developed for the corset. As you can see, you know, there's all these adjustments that I've made. So I'm not going to be doing it large scale. I'm going to do a mini scale for you, but follow the exact same, you know, steps that I did with this one. So we're going to start off um, first by basically making this, you know, what we took the measurements of on our body into real life. So the first thing you're going to want to do is making box. A box is the easiest way I like to start off doing this. And bear with me because I'm very scrappy. I like to get to the location as fast as possible, the least amount of steps. Um, so all my design teachers are probably like screaming right now, but my largest measurements here width and height wise are 17 and a half across and 17 going down. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my box. So this you would actually be measuring out you know, this is 17, this is 17 and a half um, on paper. And you don't wanna go edge to edge. So give yourself, you know, extra space like I'm doing here um, because you will need it for like edits and things like that. And what's really good is you wanna make sure you are marking the center. Let me break out my baby ruler to show you. So that's, you know, I would measure where is halfway, mark, mark, dotted line down the center. Okay, so for dotted line down the center, we have eight inches for from the bottom of our corset to the bottom of the neckline. So we're gonna measure out eight here. All right, so there's our eight. That's gonna be the bottom of our neck. And then remember, we have a measurement of eight at the top here. So finding the middle, here's four. Here's four. Okay, we've got that measurement. And I'm just labeling this out for you guys to show you. All right, so remember when I was telling you about like, you know, how wide do you want the straps? So I had mine about one and a half, I think. So I'm just gonna put 0.5. So the first thing we can draw here is actually this neckline. So this shape right here. So, you know, like I was saying before, I kind of liked, liked mine a little bit more square. And you'll see on my pattern how many adjustments I made. You know, I made adjustments to how deep the, the neck was and the shape of this curve. And that's totally fine. There is an actual tool that helps you make this kind of like any kind of curved shape and it's called a French curve. Um, I don't have one, but I just eyeball everything. But the French curve is amazing, but it really helps you make like these really perfect curves for like anywhere, you know, neckline, armhole, things like that. So I would highly recommend that if you're just starting out because then you don't have to guess your curves. You can just use the French curve. Okay, so we've got our neckline there. Notice I'm only drawing half. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fold down this center line and cut your fabric out on fold. So never draw your patterns in full. Always do them in half and fold your fabric. Do it the lazy way. Um, okay, so next measurement I have my side measurement. So remember how I said that this was, you know, longer in the front, higher up here. So this measurement here, I estimated. You can kind of see, you know, how much of a difference is that? I'm gonna say two. If you liked kind of the shape in the front of my corset, you can use the measurement of two. So what I'm gonna do is go up two, and then what I'm gonna mark out is this measurement. So that's seven. So I'm gonna mark out seven here. Now we have two more lines that we can draw. So the second line we can draw is this shape right here. Keep your lines soft. And by that, don't try to make curves too steep. That's gonna be way harder to sew for you, but I would recommend just kind of going for like a softer shape. So the next curve we're gonna draw is the armhole here. So right here, this shape right here. Again, would use a French curve if you had one. 
And look at that. You've just drawn your corset. Amazing. After we have drawn half our corset, what you're gonna do now is we're going to split it up into all these pieces. So this is my front piece. This is the second piece. This piece here is for shaping. This helps with shaping in your bust. About one third up my armhole. I'm gonna make a little mark here and then kind of see a little bit of, a little bit of curve. Kind of end right about there. Already amazing. So now how you're gonna give yourself a little bit of shape. I'm going with another color and you basically want to carve out a little bit. Carve out just a little bit in the top and in the bottom. Okay, so that space is gone. And what's gonna happen is once you close that, once you sew those two new green lines together, it's gonna create a little tiny like bump and that's gonna give you a little bit of shape in the front or your chest. Cuckoo, so we got that. Remember looking back at, you know, how many lines did we want for boning? All right, so it looks like we have the front. We have two on the sides. We've got boning in the front, so I'm just gonna mark it with my green pen. For the second one, I basically just picked a point here. Picked a point here, wanted it to narrow a little bit. And just, you know, just draw a line. Use your ruler. I'm not using my ruler, but I should be. Now that you have all those points marked out, cut out your shapes. Remember how I said, you know, we want to be putting this on the fold. This is going to be on a fold. I'm going to mark it, fold. Another good thing to mark is this is going to be the center front. So I like to put a little CF just to tell you that's the front. This, what did I call this? I called this front side. Okay, front side. Always good to label your pieces before you cut them out. Front. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this out. Remember when you're cutting here that you're gonna cut along the new lines that we drew. Since this is on fold, I wanna cut past the fold and up. Okay, so where you have that fold, you're actually gonna fold. This way, when you go to cut your pieces out, you actually know it's on the fold because your paper's on the fold and you won't forget. But, you know, always good to mark your pieces. Okay, now we've got our two front pieces. Those are my minis, these are my fulls. Very cute, mama and baby. We're gonna do the same exact thing for the back. You know, the back is a little bit simpler because the strap is basically a triangle. You've got 13 and then remember whatever width uh, you want your strap, 1.5. You're gonna mark out 13, 1.5. And the next part is these two back pieces. Now, you know that the distance in your back is going to be 16 inches, but you wanna leave some gap here, some space here, because you're gonna be, you know, adding grommets here and lacing it up. This is why this style is so forgiving. I would start out with just like taking out two inches maybe. So minus two, 14. We're only doing one piece. So 14 would be the total across. So divide by two equals seven. And that's going to give you this measurement here. And remember the height of this rectangle is seven because that's what the measurement we took was on our front. So you'll see that I have labeled all my pattern pieces. So this one I called back and I put a number with a circle around it to indicate how many pieces I need to cut of this. So for the floral fabric, I needed to cut two and for the lining, I also needed to cut two. Put the same notes here. Another thing to note, just like the front, you wanna put that this is the center back. These are where the grommets are gonna go. I've also labeled my strap to here and then lining is also two. Next part, you are going to take your front pieces that you have cut out and you are going to tape them onto a larger piece of paper so you have space around the outside um, to add your seam allowance. Tape your pattern piece using some scotch tape. 
just in a couple places. Um, it doesn't need to be all over, just something to keep it in place. And what you're gonna be doing now is adding seam allowance. So generally seam allowance, I like to add about half an inch. And what that is, this half inch border that's gonna go all the way around your pattern pieces. And it's gonna give you extra room to sew and in case you need to make adjustments. How I normally do this for, this is that original line here where we've cut out, I'll mark half an inch. I think for this one I did a three eighths. And then you're just gonna draw like that. For the curves, just go little by little. Move and draw. Another thing you can do for curves is just mark out little dots every half inch. And now you just kind of got to connect a dot. Remember those as a kid? I recommend using a pencil at first. So now you have your seam allowance. You're gonna cut out all the way around. Now you have your pattern pieces with your seam allowance. So the next thing you're going to do is you're gonna to want to cut out a set of everything. Now you don't need to do lining for this. We're just making like the outer shell. So use a cheap fabric. I think what I used for my prototype is I used muslin, which is traditionally used to make prototypes in fashion design, really affordable. Cut out everything you need to make basically the shell. So that would be your front, front side, the straps, and then sew it all together and try it on. Now, unfortunately, I did make a prototype for this corset and I threw away that prototype because I didn't think I would need it. And I didn't until now. So I can't show you what that prototype looked like, but what I did with it is I tried it on in the mirror. Might be helpful to get a friend to kind of hold the back for you because it will be open a bit. And what you wanna do is just use, you know, use a pen. If you need to just like, the front neck shape, you know, mark it with like a Sharpie with a pen and then transfer all of those adjustments to your pattern, whether that's laying the actual prototype on your paper pattern and then tracing over, you know, the new line or estimating or taking specific measurements. You do what works best for you. That's what I enjoy most about what I do is I'm budging a lot of things. Like, yes, I did have formal training on this, but I hadn't been sewing for like several years so having to relearn a lot of what i did learn in school but also giving my spin on it and being like well i'm gonna do it this way because it's easier and it gets me the same you know result Alrighty, so i hope this was a semi-helpful tutorial hopefully you can take elements from this video that will help you in your pattern making endeavors. I will be putting out a series, hopefully soon, about getting to know your sewing machine and just getting started with sewing in general. So if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know and I will see you guys next time. Bye.